Well, it's so good to be here with you. Uh, ba based on everything I can tell, it seems like you really love your life, turning yes. 90 this year. Yes, I do. I do. I, I'm not crazy about being 90, but uh, 27 would be nice. Of course, I've been 27 five times. <laughs> Um, I just read your um, wonderful autobiography, yes. A Lampshade in a Whorehouse. Yes. Um, would you ever see that book turned into a biopic or a feature about your life? Yes. And it, who it would, would play it? Yeah, I would say that definitely it will be a, a, movie, a movie maybe or something like that or a whole bio, whatever they call them. You know, you with your big words. <laughs> You've met all the presidents since Eisenhower. Except for JFK, I read. That's true. Okay. Who had the best sense of humor? All those presidents. Well, the, the one that has the best sense of humor of all of them was the elder George Bush. He gr gr loves, loves jokes, loves uh, comedy, and loves humor and all that sort of thing. He's, and he's easy to be around? Oh, I adore him. He's, he's such a nice man. And I was just thinking today of the way he got to be president. He simply inherited it. He, in other words, he was just slid in there because, look, he was head of the CIA. He was in government service all his life. Mm -hmm. That poor woman, Barbara, moved 37 times. Mm -hmm. See, when you work for the government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But imagine, but that patient, the uh, great patient, and then to bring them up to have one become, a, uh, two of them become governors and one become a president. If I were Barbara Bush, I'd be running around with a, a sandwich board saying, boy, am I something else. <laughs> <laughs> she has a fabulous sense of humor. Many view you as the queen of modern American comedy. What should young people who want to go into comedy what kind of questions should they be asking themselves? It's a good idea, the way you put that, Xavier, oh. to ask themselves, do I want to pay the price? There is a price. Mm -hmm. You can't stay in one town and become a world-famous comic. You're going to have to travel. Mm -hmm. Traveling is a rough life mm -hmm. for you and your family. Uh, it, it's, it's rough. Also, uh, taking the rejection that it takes, the, the guts to, act, to not accept rejection. Because mm -hmm. if, you re if you accept rejection, you'll fail. Mm -hmm. And if you can't live with it mm -hmm. or not accept it, mm -hmm. uh, you won't make it. A lot of, a lot of little difficulties mm -hmm. of becoming a comic, but it's a great sport. Oh. Oh, yes. I can see the passion in oh, your yes, eyes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. At age 37, you made your professional debut in San Francisco's Purple Onion. Do you think performers can find breakthrough success at any age? There are times when it would be too old. Oh. Let's face it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> at 37, I was like a red-hot 21. Oh. Yeah, I have... Got that eternal youth thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you have any idea that the stand-up comedy you were doing back in the day was groundbreaking? Had no idea. Oh. Just needed a buck. <laughs> needed the money. I was making sixty dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Sixty dollars a week. You can't park for sixty dollars. Oh no, no. Uh, there were in in my life at that time. I'll give you an example of people putting negativity on you. The lady who had been playing piano for me to s sing for you, a close friend, when I told her that I was going to become a comic, she said, these are her words, don't give up your day job. <gasps> I heard it with my own ears. Now, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We all run into these. But from your dearest friend. Mm -hmm. It may be from your mother. Mm -hmm. It may be from your daddy. Oh, I'll give you another example. Um, Willis. Uh, the, this male star. Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis. I've never slept with him, so I don't know him that well. <laughs> but Bruce Willis's father 
was a blue collar worker in a factory. And he's telling Bruce, hey, baby, you get in there and you get this job and you stick you stick with this. And you stay in there. You can work your way up to a foreman. Mm -hmm. That was his father's dream for Bruce. Wow. But you see, you mustn't accept anyone else's limiting dream mm -hmm. or limiting idea. You must have your own. If it isn't your own idea, it isn't going to work anyway. In your autobiography, you say, and I quote, I'm not the kind of person who enjoys power, not a Lucy or a Streisand who knows it all and does it all. So how would you describe yourself? I would describe myself as maybe a bit of a Renaissance type who is interested in all forms of art and life. There, there's very little that I'm not interested in. I am studying a chart of the planets right now. I couldn't believe that our world is so small yeah. compared to the big ones. And now I'm bothered by it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I didn't know it. And I, I love to learn new things every day. And I, I'm always reading maybe three or four books at once. And uh, I can't imagine losing interest. Yeah. I can't imagine. So being interested is what drives you. Is like what? Being interested in so many things is what drives you. Oh, <laughs> that's it. And I have this this thing about, uh, the, the I suppose they call it a work ethic, which mm -hmm. of course, coming from Ohio. I'm from uh, Ohio too, which, by the way, which, Akron. Oh, the rubber city. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, well, uh, you, you understand that Midwestern work mm -hmm. ethic. Mm -hmm. uh, you must work, you must mm -hmm. work, and after you work, you have a good time, but we must work and accomplish something and do, do, do. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I guess it's just part of me. Mm -hmm. I really feel that way. Well, you're so uninteresting to other people if you aren't interested in something. When you're not busy doing showbiz stuff, what kind of things do you like to spend your time doing? Obviously, you just said reading. Reading, painting, I just played solitaire till you were ready. I love to play solitaire or gin. Uh, I love to cook. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like to eat, too. What do you cook? What are your special Well, I, have a, I just heard cook? of a new pasta uh, with a vodka sauce, mm -hmm. and it's got escargot. Mm -hmm. No, 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 oh. no. Anchovies? Uh, something that I... Shallots. Oh. And I sell them do shallots. Mm. So I'm terribly interested mm. in this. It sounds heavenly. Mm. So that's the next thing I'm going to test. Okay. Try. <laughs> sounds wonderful. Yes, and you serve it with a, a caviar, a little bit of caviar on top, mm. and then you eat it. Mm. And then you eat it. Yeah, that's, that's what you do. Part. Yes, yes. Um, is there anything that you'd still like to do that you haven't tried to do yet? And I, I guess not. I, I guess I've I've got lists of things I've done and they amaze me. I've really pretty much done whatever was within my reach. That's fab fabulous. <laughs> that's that's nice to have it that way mm -hmm. <laughs> because I feel fulfilled. And <clears throat> in September, I will become a great-grandmother. Now we expect a little, a, a little uh, respect, you know. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm not just grandmother, I am a great-grandmother. Well, that's very exciting. Congratulations. It's exciting to me. That's fantastic. It's and happy to... birthday. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> so, does that wrap it up? Yeah, I mean, sound good to me. It sounded good to me. Yeah, it was a nice ending. Thank you very much. Yeah, very, Thank you. Hey, you're a good interviewer. This is my very first one. <laughs> I've never done this before. Well, you're a natural. Thank you. Absolute natural. Thank you.